After five epic seasons, The Last Kingdom has finished its run on Netflix, but fret not, the story of Uhtred of Bebenbur is far from over. In this video, I'll be going over Season 5's climactic finish, what this means for the future of the franchise, and sorting out these names because Odin be damned, it can get confusing. Oh yeah, if you like these types of videos, fulfill your destiny by liking and subscribing, every little bit helps me out. This is King Edward, one of the few names I can actually pronounce. He was ruler of the Anglo-Saxons from 899 to 924. Throughout the season, he's had to deal with invading Icelanders under the command of Breda, the death of his wife Aelfled, and betrayal by his father-in-law, Ethelhelm of Wiltshire. It's all culminated in a final battle at the Northumbrian fortress of Bebenburg, which seems like fate since it was Bebenburg where the Last Kingdom story started way back in Season 1. King Edward has struggled with whether or not to invade this fortress. Not only is his niece Aelfwyn held captive inside, but attacking would put him at war with King Constantine of the Scots. But if Edward were to be victorious here, he could take out the King of Scotland. The bulk of the Scottish King's men have yet to arrive, so if there's any chance to strike, it's now. But in doing so, it would risk killing his niece. This is where Uhtred comes in. He has waited five long seasons to reclaim his home, which currently belongs to his cousin Wittgar Eilfriksen, who took over its command by killing his own father Eilfric in season four. Because of his insider knowledge of the fortress, he knows there's a secret yet dangerous way within its walls, a way which only a few men at a time can traverse considering it entails climbing these steep cliffs. If they can get in and rescue Elfwen, Edward can lay siege without jeopardizing the life of his niece. Meanwhile, Ethelstan, King Edward's son, stalls for time outside the ramparts. For you historians out there, you'll know Ethelstan will eventually become the first king of England, a dream envisioned by Edward's father Alfred in previous seasons. In fact, Uhtred will later foreshadow this unifying king by chastising Edward, telling him that he's not that man. But the man who can unify this country must be a figure behind which the people can stand together as one. You have shown that you are not that man. The events culminating in this battle can be attributed mainly to one man, Ethelhelm of Wiltshire, King Edward's father-in-law. He's been secretly scheming to get his grandson Elfweird on the throne, as it would allow him to hold more power and influence. If there's one event that really set up this battle, it's the death of his daughter and wife to the king, Queen Eilflaed. Ethelhelm ordered the assassination of Alice, known amongst the Saxons as the visionary for her visions of St. Cuthbert. The assassination was supposed to look as though it were done by the Danes, who at this point in time are under the command of Siegtrieger Iverson. This was an attempt to start a war between the Danes and Saxons. If such a war were to occur, King Edward would need Ethelhelm's army and vast riches in order to win. That's why Ethelhelm wants this war. The king would be indebted to him. But what Ethelhelm doesn't know is that his daughter, in secret, accompanied Alice on her voyage. So when the assassins came and asked which one of them was the visionary, Queen Aelfled sacrificed herself, saying it was her. So Ethelhelm's plan ultimately resulted in both the death of his daughter and King Edward waging war on Siegtrigger, believing them responsible for the death of his wife. It's only until later on in the season that Uhtred discovers Ethelhelm's plan. But by that time, Ethelhelm has fled to Northumbria with his grandson with an entirely new plan. In exchange for King Constantine's help in raising rebellion against King Edward, Ethelhelm promises half the profits of the land of Mercia through the marriage of his grandniece, Elfwin. And if Constantine puts Ethelhelm's grandson on on the throne in Wessex, he guarantees no incursions into Scottish lands, so this is a win-win for both parties. King Edward's greatest weakness, according to Ethelhelm, is his impulsiveness. And this is shown when King Edward decides to attack the fortress, even though Uhtred hasn't given the signal that he's retrieved Lady Elfwin. And this impulsiveness works to Constantine's advantage. In a stroke of tactical genius, Constantine makes it appear as though his men are fleeing, when in reality this is all a ruse to get Edward's men closer to the fortress, so that when the Scottish reinforcements arrive, Edward's army will be attacked from two sides. Meanwhile, Uhtred has tasked the nun Hild with taking Lady Aelfwin to safety. Hild and Uhtred used to be lovers, and as we'll see later on in the finale, Hild will later bring back to Bebenburg an unexpected surprise, but more on that in a bit. 
With the Scottish reinforcements arriving, Edward's men are pushed towards the sea, with many men plummeting to their deaths. Among these cornered men is Ethelstan and Kinleif, the man Lady Elfwyn really wants to marry. If help does not come soon, all of them will perish. This is when Uhtred rides off to engage the help of his daughter Stiora's Danish warriors. At the end of season 4, Stiora went off to start a life with Sigtrigger, and she had to watch her own father execute him a few episodes prior at the behest of King Edward. Don't worry, it was Sigtrigger who asked him to do it. Stiora believes this fight to be over, but Uhtred gives an impassioned speech stating that if they help, he promises them peace in a land where Danes and Saxons can live in peace. And just as it looks like King Edward's men are to be wiped out, Stiora and the Danes come to the rescue, while Uhtred makes his way into the heart of Bebenber to claim what is his. He tracks down his betraying cousin Witgar and kills him by throwing him over a railing and having him impaled. Ethelhelm, knowing the battle is lost, tells his grandson they must flee, but they're interrupted by Elfweald's half-brother, Ethelstan. Now, Elfweald is ready to protect his grandfather, but he doesn't know that his grandfather has been lying to him that it was Ethelhelm who inadvertently killed Elfweird's mother. And when he learns the truth, Elfweird tells Ethelstan to do with his grandfather whatever he sees fit. Ethelstan lets Ethelhelm live, saying that he must now face the agony he caused. But Ethelhelm knows whatever lays ahead of him cannot be good, and thus he kills himself. With Uhtred victorious and Bebenber finally his, he makes his way to the courtyard to see it burning. Everything he's fought for his entire life is about to go up in flames, until a miracle happens. It begins to rain, almost as if to say that the gods are with him. Is this fate? Is this destiny? One of the major themes of The Last Kingdom has been that of destiny. I mean, Uhtred can't go an episode without saying his trademark, destiny is all. But this season calls destiny into question as several of those closest to Uhtred question his blind faith in it. I mean, destiny is cruel. All it seems to do is cause us sorrow and pain. Perhaps pain is our choice, not destiny's. Stiora chastises her father, saying he only believes in destiny because it acts as an excuse for all the pain it has caused him and others. You have always spoken as though every action is part of some plan. Everything you have done has been excused because it was not your choice. For five seasons, Uhtred has been the pawn of others. His fate seems out of his hands and he feels helpless because of it. Sometimes I think that my fate is to wander and to never arrive. But it's not until the final moments of the series that Uhtred takes fate into his own hands, defies the king, and creates his own destiny. With Edward recovering from the battle, Uhtred makes a deal with Constantine behind the king's back. Of course, this isn't revealed until Edward makes it official that Uhtred will be Lord of Northumbria and that he and his kin will be made its rulers for all eternity. Edward even proclaims that he owes Uhtred their lives and thus the Danes may live peacefully in these lands. And Edward's kind of gung-ho to go off and fight the Scots and unify England once and for all. But Uhtred reveals the deal he made with the King of Scotland. Uhtred will be the Lord of Northumbria, acting as a buffer between the Saxons and Scots, sworn to neither side to ensure the peace. Edward sees this as a betrayal, but as Uhtred pointed out earlier, he does not believe Edward to be a man capable of achieving this unity. But the king, who has just praised Uhtred in front of everyone and knows he is indebted to him, kind of has his hands tied to do anything about this. We see a bunch of cheerful reunions as the Saxons and Danes celebrate their victory, but it's here we can see where the future of the franchise is headed with a few unresolved storylines. It's been confirmed by Netflix that this is the last season, but fear not, a movie has been confirmed that will continue from the books the series is based off. Confirmed in January of 2022 on the official Last Kingdom Twitter account is the new movie Seven Kings Must Die, which has already started filming. It's based on the final three Saxon Stories novels, War of the Wolf, Sword of Kings, and Warlord. Now, I have not read the books, so there won't be any spoilers there, but there are some unresolved story threads this finale leaves us with. First, Hild brings Osbert to Bebenber to learn of his origins. Now, we know that Osbert is actually Uhtred's son he had with Gisela, and the last we saw of him was way back in Season 3 when he was just a baby. With Osbert being the only male left to pass on Uhtred's bloodline, remember Uhtred's first son had his manhood cut off by Breda, this may prove an interesting development in the future of Bebenber. Uhtred also 
also asks Edith to stay longer under the guise that she should help the wounded, but there's been romantic chemistry brewing between them for some time now. It's been hinted they may get together way back in episode one when Edith comes to visit and they joke that Uhtred's still not married. Uhtred's still the same. What? He's not married either. <laughs> it looks as though Aelfweird is in prison, but with his grandfather dead, who knows if he'll play a role in what's to come. We also have the birth of Edward's new baby, Edmund, with his current wife, Yedgufu. I have so much trouble pronouncing her name. But as we know, it's Ethel Stan who will take over as king in 924 and then go on to take over all of England. But what does that mean for Uhtred? How does he go from being this peacekeeper holding the Scots and Saxons from all-out war to helping Ethel Stan conquer all of England? Well, he never said he was against this so-called unification, he just said he didn't see Edward as the suitable one to do it. Again, I haven't read the books, but considering Uhtred was pivotal in raising Ethelstan, the two will likely be on the same side when unifying the country. Now, the season ends with Uhtred overlooking the shores of his newly conquered kingdom as we see flashes, both good and bad, of some of the most major events he's experienced over this journey. These are the major moments that have led him up to this point today, and I think it's fitting the last flashback is of him getting baptized. Baptism represents forgiveness and cleansing from one's sin, and can symbolize regeneration and renewal. It can also mean a fresh start, which is what it seems to represent for Uhtred who has said throughout the season he wishes to settle down. And with Uhtred finally Lord of Bevanberg, the series comes to an end, but hopefully we'll have word soon when the story continues with the Seven Kings Must Die movie. Thanks for watching everyone, what did you think of the final season of The Last Kingdom? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, destiny is so...